<clears throat> Hello guys, uh, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Sabi. Uh, I want to uh, talk about the situation in uh, Nigeria and what is going on with Biafra independence. And listen, I'm not a politician. I have nothing to do with politics, okay? I'm just, uh, uh, I'm a rapper, musician and a student. Okay, it's just that I take a lot of interest in this particular situation due to many reasons. One of those reasons is that my country, Poland, we also used to fight for our independence. We were trying to be destroyed. People tried to Germanize us. They tried to make us Russians. In the end, we fought for our independence and we got it back. And I also think there is a lot of similarities in Biafra history and in Polish history. And, and you know, this is one of the reasons why I'm really feeling for Igbo people. And I would like to address allegations uh, against Biafra getting its independence that I heard about. And I'm actually quite surprised because there is a lot of evil people uh, who come up with those ideas and allegations and they don't want uh, the independence of Biafra. They believe in one united Nigeria. So you don't have to take what I say as uh, as, as the universal truth, but I just hope that uh, maybe I will interest you in uh, taking this matter in your own hands and you will go and do some research, check out the facts and what has been going on, uh, go out there and spread the word to people. At least in my opinion, this is a very important issue and we shouldn't just close our eyes, especially that European media, they rarely talk about what is going on in Africa. And in the end, we all live uh, in this earth, okay? We are all human beings, we all deserve respect, and we all deserve to have a good life. Okay, so let's talk about um, this issue. Like, Biafrans, they want their independence, right? They are a part of Nigeria right now. Um, Nigeria doesn't want to give them independence, and there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of allegations against Igbos. Uh, Igbos themselves call Igbos selfish people for wanting an independence, okay? People say that Mazinam Dikanu is the radicalist, that uh, he's calling, uh, that he is uh, causing a war now in Nigeria, that this is all his fault because uh, he is uh, going to cause a lot of deaths and basically what he does is propaganda. And people say the solution is not the Biafran independence, the solution is to unite Nigeria and unite uh, Yoruba, Fulanis and Igbos all together and that uh, Nigeria needs a new government who is going to take care of each uh, of all of the tribes equally, right? Because it's not just Yoruba, uh, Hausa Fulani and Igbos, there is also different tribes. Okay, and then they say that Igbos are being selfish because they want um, a Biafra back, they want to separate from Nigeria and they want to basically leave Nigeria out of oil. Um, and that this is so selfish that they even want to do it. So let's talk about it for a minute. Let's talk about the war. Let's talk about killings uh, and uh, that uh, Igbos are uh, trying to have a war and this is going to cause a lot of lives and a lot of, uh, you know, bad things to happen. But I think this is such a stupid argument against uh, Mazi Namdikano and against Igbos because uh, Mazi Namdikano uh, has not been calling for war. He has been calling for democratic referendum so people can democratically, democratically, right, that people can decide if they want to separate from Nigeria or not. And in democracy, uh, it, what matters is what most of people want, right? But Nigerian government is saying no, and uh, they have been saying no for such a long time, but they have no intentions in trying to actually solve this problem at all. It's just Buhari says no, because no. They've been trying to get this referendum for such a long time, okay, and referendums are happening in democratic countries all the time. And I'm sorry, but referendum is a peaceful way uh, to to get something done, right? They have not come to uh, the government and Igbos have not started to uh, kill people uh, in the name of Biafra. This is not what is happening. They have been killed. They have been killed. They have been killed. They have been mistreated for so many years. They have been put up with this. The government, um, the government doesn't want, uh, you know, the, the part of where Igbo lives. The government don't care about it. They haven't had Igbo president for like eight years or something. Okay. And basically 
uh, they feel like they have been mistreated very, very much for a very long time. Which brings me to another point. People against Biafra, they say that um, Igbos should just shut up and they should just unite with the rest of Nigeria that this is a progress and development to get the country going. Okay, you know what? This idea is it's a very beautiful idea to unite people into one, uh, to give them the common goals so they can have, right, these common goals, uh, this, this common vision of the country together and they can build the country together. This is a great vision. And I, I have nothing against it. It's just that um, if you have been mistreated in your own country for so many years, tell me, how, why would you even expect suddenly like that something is going to change? Like, I think this is a little bit too little too late. You know, if Nigeria government done that many years ago, then I think that would be doable. Um, but it's been going on for too long. Like, Igbos just don't trust Nigeria anymore. And they're just not going to start suddenly trusting Nigeria. It's impossible. Like, it is against how human beings work. You know, like we can put up with something for, for, for some time. We can try, try to change, to change the problem. But if nothing has been done, the, it comes to the point where you are sick and tired and you don't believe anything that people, government, whoever says, because you've been mistreated for too long. It's normal. Like imagine if you are in the relationship, right? Like stupid compare country to the relationship, but you know what? Sometimes uh, let's compare. Sometimes macro managing has to be done first, comparing to micro managing. So let's think about the relationship. If you are in a relationship and the person is mistreating you, um, you love this person, right? And um, you will put up with it for some time uh, because because you want to be with them, right? You you don't want to break up. You don't want to, you know cause this pain to another person by breaking up with them. But if this thing is going on too long and someone is promising you things, they don't deliver. Uh, if they uh, just blow you off all the time, if they mistreat you, there's going to come the point where you will want to break up and you are not going to believe anything they say. You are not going to believe that they will change because you have never got a proof to believe that this change is going to come. And this is a normal thing. This is not being selfish. This is not selfishness. If someone mistreated you and you don't want anything to do with these people, this is not being selfish. This is self-protection. Um, and also, now let's talk about this allegation that, that um, people say that if Igbos are not going to stop uh, fighting for Biafra, there's going to be a war, right? And the war was happening before that it's going to happen again that many it, that many innocent people are going to lose their lives and uh, and this uh, yes and this is a huge problem and listen guys i can't sit here and tell you that you should go to war you should fight um that would be so hypocritical of me you know i was very lucky to be born in a country uh, who already got the independence i was not living at the times when we had war here okay so um I, I don't want to be talking in terms of who should go to war, who should not. I, I don't know. But my point is that, like, people say that this fight for BFI independence, independence is going to cause war and uh, kill a lot of people, right? Um, but at the same time, they are saying that um, Nigeria needs a radical change of government, that there has to be politicians who are not corrupted, who care equally about each tribe, um, basically good politicians. So tell me, how exactly do you think that is going to happen? You think that your politicians are peacefully just going to resign from, from, from their position in politics? That's not going to happen, like ever. If you want that to happen, there is there's something, something big has to come. Like revolution, you know, revolution, you would need revolution to, for that to happen. And revolution is also going to cause a lot of, a lot of uh, people losing their life. So how else is it going to change? Like seriously, think about it for a minute. You know, this is, it's a great idea. Politicians should change. We should have politics who are not, not corrupted in any way. How are you going to do it? How? 
Plus, you have uh, other countries involved in who is who is in the government because they are paying those people as well. So you think this is just gonna happen peacefully and there's not gonna be war, nobody's gonna die? Okay, but let's go one step further, right? Let's assume that the government somehow changed. You have wonderful politics who actually care about Yoruba and Igbo and Fulani and other tribes equally, right? And that, um, you know, finances are being divided equally, blah, 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 all those things. Let's just assume that happened. Tell me, how, how long do you think that peace is going to last? Because you have millions of Igbos um, who have very strong self-identification as Igbo, not Nigeria. Okay, you can't just change how people feel. And we are not talking about 20 people. We are not even talking about thousands of people. We are talking about millions of people being in the country that they don't identify with. So, you know, there might be peace for a little while, but those Igbos, they are not going to stop feeling like Igbos. They will still want, want their change, even if, even if the government changes and everything, because it's also about self-identification. And uh, Igbos, they used to be a kingdom. They were self-sufficient back in the days, and, and that history stays with them in their heart. Maybe some Igbos may, don't feel that way, but millions of them do. And I think that if you want to unite, unite people uh, who, who feel that way and tell them that they are someone else now, they are Nigerians, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I think, I think the government would really have to kind of brainwash them, you know. Yeah, basically. Sometimes I think about like if Poland would still be uh, in Germany and we didn't get our independence, right? And... Um, they would have to make us believe that we are Germans. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it is not such a big deal. Maybe it would be good to be a German person, but then I would have a very uncomfortable feeling knowing that my grandfathers, grand-grandfathers, my ancestors were basically Polish and suddenly I'm German. Like, I think it is, you know, I think it is very psychological and it's quite complicated how our brain works. But we really need this uh, sense of who we are <clears throat> because this is a very important base for our development and for our, for our life. Maybe we don't think about it every day, but it's subconscious. So um, I'm not really sure how people who believe in One United Nigeria want to argument that uh, thinking in the long, long term relations between Yoruba, Igbo and and Hausa Fulani, especially that the history there has been so bloody, people can't just forget. People, people are not gonna forget. You may peace them, you know, you may calm them down for some time, but people are not gonna forget. People know who they are, and they want, uh, they want to be acknowledged. You can't change that. You would have to brainwash people basically, and people say that. Um, that the attitude that uh, Igbo people have towards Biafra, that this is, I think it's called tribalism, that they think like a tribe, not as a nation. Now, I don't think that's true either, because um, they used to be a nation. They, It's not like just a random tribe walking around Africa. They used to have their kingdom there. They had a the territory, they had their, their government, they have their language, they have their culture, and it was taken away from them. It was taken away from them and they have been mistreated for many years. And now let's talk about real quick about Mazinam Dikan, right? Um, he is calling for the democratic referendum. He is not calling for war. Right now they are talking about the war because it has been self-defense. Like how do you imagine people, uh, people being attacked, women and children being mistreated? Boko Haram is also coming and killing people for being Christians and what you just expect people to just put up with it? Why? I mean, every self-respected person is going to protect themselves. Otherwise, you are a little bit stupid, right? So I don't know why people assume and say that he's calling for war. He's calling for war because Nigeria caused that war. I mean, Nigerian government, 
the people from the north, they attacked Ibos. So what do you expect them to sit on their ass and just wait and do nothing? They want their own country so they can also protect themselves. So they can close the borders from the attackers who are attacking and killing them. So they have, uh, they can uh, have their own government and they can solve their own issues. Okay. And people also say that um, even if they will uh, get their Biafra back, uh, you know, it is not, uh, it is not uh, guaranteed that they will succeed. They might even uh, become more poor. But don't you understand that they want to take, that they want to uh, take in charge their own decisions. They want to be responsible for their own citizens, their own lives, because they have no power at all. I don't understand. I really don't know why it's so difficult to understand. I, I think it's pretty, like, I think it's pretty obvious. Anyway, guys, this is, this, these are my thoughts about uh, Biafra and Nigeria. And you don't have to agree with me. I just hope you will do your own research. Maybe you can also take a video, put it out on social media if you are from maybe from Poland or other country. Um, just so people know what's up. Um, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Okay. So many people are even asking me, like, why are you so interested in the situation in Biafra? That's not your country. Like, you've never been to Africa. And that is absolutely true. And uh, I don't know, maybe this is weird. But like I said, I have my reasons why it is very interesting to me. And I do care about the situation. Um, and at the same time, I think we are all entitled to our own opinions. It's just that we don't uh, have to terrorize other people because of our opinions. And I don't think I'm terrorizing anyone. I just want to give you my thoughts and you can take them or you can leave them. Uh, also, like, I don't want to be putting a lot of videos, you know, who are about, which are about politics, you know, like my channel is about music, but I just wanted to, to put out this one because I felt like this is important for me. Um, nevertheless, um, I'm not going to be posting anything political anymore. It's just one time thing. Thank you guys for listening. I hope I'm doing something good and take care of yourself. Stay safe. Bye.